Hi, this is Steve again. I just want to give a quick walkthrough of one of the Google Map examples, as you can find on Blackboard. So I have a virtual folder on my uh, C drive, and in there I've placed the file which I've downloaded from Blackboard. So I just bring that up. There's the file with all the data in it. And I'll just show you that working now in a browser. So if I bring up a browser and go and enter that file, there's the result. So it's a Google map which I can which I can move around and also has some text around it and so on. But also it has a marker there. And you'll see as I move the mouse over the marker, something else is happening. The outline of building 33 is coming up. And also I can click on the marker and up comes some text. So let's go and see how that's done. So here's the code for that. And if I come up to the top, you'll see, first of all, uh, the HTML tag is there, and the head is declared, and a meta tag which uh, declares a viewport, and some styling. It's useful to add some styling in. Uh, you'll see that I've declared the HTML height and the body height to 100%, and margins to zero around. I've also um, I'm loading in the script, the next thing, from the Google APIs. And uh, this is a very, this is the common form of loading in uh, the Google APIs mapping API. So you'll see that it calls the API from the particular location and gives a key. Now in this particular case, this is a key. This is my key for my login. So if you've created a Google account, you can get your own key, or for the purposes of the course, just use use this key. And also sensor equals false. Uh, we're not using any uh, special input sensors here. Uh, next, I need to declare some code in JavaScript. So I'm moving out of HTML. So I say script, and then the type of the script is text JavaScript. That's the MIME type. And um, this little device here that handles, if I have a browser that doesn't handle JavaScript, it, it'll comment it out. So I declare a variable map. JavaScript is great. You don't have to declare a particular type, a data type. You just say, I have a variable of map. And I have another one of line color, which is clearly a text string, which is going to be a blue line, and a line thickness 3, oh, you'll see how that's used in a moment, and a line opacity of point uh, 4. Now I need some functions, and you'll see here that I have a function initialize, and, and that's the first function that's called when the page is loaded. And some other functions, set markers and so on. What I'll do is I'll scroll down to the bottom of the page here and just show how this function initialize is called. So I'll scroll down here, I'll come back to this in a minute. And there's the very end of the uh, end of the document here. There's the HTML document finishing there. And just above it is the end of that script, which um, we saw started just above. You'll see here that as the JavaScript is loaded, all of these functions are loaded into memory and the uh, interpreter is going through line by line, recognizing those functions, and when it's got to all of these, it comes out of the functions, and it actually comes to this single line here, which asks it to actually run a function. So this is, as the page is loaded, it gets to this point and sees this call to a function called add load event um, initialize. So what that does is it calls a function called add load event, and as Notepad is nicely showing me, that's here, and a function name. Now the reason we do this is it's possible that on a given page there may be lots of JavaScript things going on. Maybe user interface, maybe mapping, maybe um, other services with JavaScript. And each of these JavaScript elements may require to be kicked off as the program starts. So this little device here is a graceful way of starting up our mapping without mucking up anything else that might be running on the page. So we want to run the function called initialize. So what this what this function does here is it says, first of all, it gets the existing instructions for when the window is loaded and just carefully stacks that to one side into a variable called old on load. Then it looks to see if the, um, the type of the, the on load uh, isn't a function. And um, if it is if it is not, then the window on load is set to um, that particular function that's called in here as a parameter. And otherwise, it, it actually just 
can actually run that function after the old onload instruction. So basically, it's stacking up um, my call to this my call to this um, function initialize is put it after any other instructions that might have been there. It's a long way of saying that once all this code is loaded, it runs the function initialize, which, if you remember, as we come back up the page, is here. So effectively, this is the first function of my code that gets run. So a variable center point calls an, uh, a new object type of google.maps.latlong, and incidentally, um, where is that declared? Google.maps is, of course, uh, declared in the script up here in the call to the Google APIs. So JavaScript now knows what a Google.maps is and a latlong type from the importing script there. Uh, the constructor for that are a pair of um, Eastings and Northings in uh, decimal degrees. Everything's in decimal degrees, WGS84. I also declare a structure here called map options. Um, map options is then uh, put back into the map later on. But you'll see the bracket there. Everything that goes inside that is in the structure, the, this array. So I have a zoom, which is set to 19, a center, which is to center point. And you'll remember I've got my center point variable set just there. Do note the American spellings for things like center and color, of course. Map um, type ID as well, which is going to be used for the sort of backdrop to the map, in this case, a satellite. Then, having set up those two variables, comes the main event here, which is uh, map equals new Google Maps dot map. Now, this creates the Google Map for the first time, and the constructor here is the um, the document. Uh, the parameter here is the document get element by ID map canvas. Now, that's where the map's going to go, and we'll go and find that in a minute. But also, just to point out, this is where those options are fed in. So, I'm effectively I'm creating a map which has these options put in. And one of these options is the center point here. So you can see the way it's stacked up there. But it's going to place the output of the map on uh, into the get element by ID map canvas. So all of the elements in a HTML page can be given a name. But let's go and find the one called map canvas. So if I just click here and scroll down the page, looking for map canvas, and right at the bottom, underneath the script, you'll see a division tag. There's a division tag, and it's been given an ID called Map Canvas, and it's also been given a height and a width, you'll see, in pixels. So in other words, I'm declaring a, a section of the screen which is so many pixels wide by so many pixels high, and I'm giving that area a name, Map Canvas, and directing the output of the Google Maps into that container, into that division tag. So that's what that's what's going on there. And next, I have my map up and running with all the options that I set. I can now call other functions. So for example, I call a function that I've written here called setup markers. So you can see that that makes a call to this function. So here's the function here, setup markers. And what that does is it sets a new marker. So we create a variable called marker, which is a new Google Maps marker. And that itself has some options. So actually, just in the way up here that I had options fed into the, uh, the construction here, I can also feed in options here to the marker. Uh, interestingly, you'll see that the array of the markers here is actually fed in line. I don't declare a separate marker options like I did here with map options. It's just fed directly in. So in this case, it has a position, which is given a... Uh, uh, a latitude and longitude in decimal degrees again, and the map, the name of the map, which I've just declared here, and a title. So that's the marker that's put in. I also declare, a little bit further down here, another variable, uh, call this B33 outline, which is of a new Google Maps polyline. So this is declaring a, a polyline object, a Google Maps polyline object. And that itself is made up of a path of a series of coordinate pairs of latitude, longitude, latitude, longitude, all the way down, plus some colours, weights, and opacity. And that's where those settings at the top came from. Just to remind ourselves, line opacity, for example, is declared up here, and thickness and colour. Once I've declared that variable, I can then add 
that to the map. And what I can do is I can add a event a listener, which is something that sits there waiting for me to do something to the map. In this case, uh, to click on 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 the uh, or the, the map. And when I do click, it runs this virtual function linked to the event, which places up um, the the marker on the map. And there we are. And it puts up the text, a little bit of HTML there. The content is is like that, and opens opens the info window as it's called. I can also um, have a, a couple of other listeners declared, uh, one for a mouse over and one for a mouse out. That means moving the mouse onto it and moving the mouse out of focus. And what that'll do is it'll set the, uh, the outline on and off. Then a couple of um, other um, configuration functions, clear markers, reload markers, and so on. And that's it, because now I'm down to add load event which I discussed at the beginning. So, quick recap here. Every Google Map has somewhere a division marked with a name. At the top of the file, I have my call to the JavaScript library on the Google Maps API's website, together with my key. And then I have some JavaScript that does what I want to do in there. In this case, set up some options and a marker and an outline and so on. So I just come back to the map and just remind ourselves, there's the result. And I can look at that mouse, mouse in and mouse out and the click event with the info window.